Hello everyone, it's Nick here with Nick Tolman Music, and today we're going to go ahead and continue our beginner guitar lesson series using Mel Bay's Modern Guitar Method Grade 1. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at page 14. At this point we're going to be learning some new notes. We're going to be learning notes on the fourth string or the D string. Fourth string. But before we do that, I do want to review. Every time we start a new string, I like to kind of just review of what we've learned up to this point and make sure that we're grasping everything before we move on. It's really important. I've said it before and I will say it again especially in the early stages of learning to play the guitar as you're using this method, make sure you master each page before you move on. The whole idea with these early exercises is that you're gaining the kind of the minimum foundational levels of being able to play guitar and have some flexibility and some dexterity in your left hand as well as your right hand and just getting used to being able to move around the instrument with these first few notes. If you're still struggling with some of the earlier exercises, that's totally okay, it's normal. Feel free to take your time and continue to practice until you feel comfortable enough to move on to the next pages. Up to this point, we have learned notes on the first three strings. On the first string, we have learned E, F, and G. On the second string, we have learned B, C, and D. And on the third string, we have learned G, our open G, and A. So one of the things I like to do each time I learn new notes on a new string is I like to practice just moving up and down those notes. So I'm gonna start on that low open G string with G. And I'm just going to walk up and down the notes that we've learned so far. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Do that one more time. G, time without me saying it. This is kind of setting the stage for future guitar lessons where we'll talk more about scales. And a scale is just taking a set of notes and working your way up and down. And scales are excellent tools for practice. So once you've reached your way to the top, you can work your way back down those same notes. So do the same thing you just did in reverse, starting on the high G and working your way down. So G, F, E, D, C, B, A, and G. So all the way up and down would sound something like this. And there's no limit to how, how fast you can try to play it. Whatever you can do, the idea is that you are building muscle memory, you're building dexterity in your hands and fingers to remember how to navigate these notes. Just an idea, something you can use to review before you move on to page 14. So let's go ahead and take a look at page 14. So as you can see, we are learning three new notes. These are all on the fourth string or the D string. 
So the first note we see there is the note D, which is our open D string, or our open fourth string. So you may have noticed that we have begun to learn notes that maybe you think we have already learned, right? We've already learned a D up here on the second string. So it's important to note that the musical alphabet really only has, what is it, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It only has seven letters. We don't use any more letters. Those just get repeated as you move higher and lower. So whenever you repeat a letter, either above or below, maybe where you've already learned, that is called an octave. The D that we learned on the second string here is one octave higher than the D that we're talking about today. You'll notice that the pitches are very similar. They are just one octave apart. They are both D. I will continue to refer to notes sometimes as maybe like high E or low E or high D or low D, things like that to help distinguish between which octave we are talking about. All right, so D, like we said, is open on the fourth string. The next note that we're going to look at is E. So E, also a new octave of a note that we've already learned. E will be found with your second finger on the second fret of the fourth string. E. Second finger, second fret. You can see that located there on the diagram. And the last note that we'll talk about today is F, which will be our third finger on the third fret of the fourth string. Third finger, third fret. That is F. So we have D, E, F. Now, as we look at the staff, you'll notice that D that we talked about is directly below the staff. E is on the bottom line. If you haven't watched my video yet on understanding the staff, it's a really helpful tool for helping remember what notes are where on the staff. And then F is on that bottom space of the staff. So let's go ahead and try the first exercise, whole notes. As a reminder, a whole note gets four beats or four counts. We're going to go ahead and set the metronome to 72, and here we go. One, two, ready, So you're starting to see kind of a pattern. We've done very similar exercises to this on each string as we've learned new notes. At this point, that exercise shouldn't be too challenging for you because you've already kind of done this same thing. We're just doing it on a new string. Let's go ahead and try it at 120. Faster tempo. Here we go. One, two, ready, play. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next exercise utilizing half notes. You should know at this point that a half note gets two beats. If you still are struggling to remember that, feel free to look back at previous lessons or also check out my video on the different types of notes and their values. Here we go, half note gets two beats. We're going to set our metronome to 72. And here we go. One, two, ready, and play. Rest. 
Same kind of idea. Let's try it at a faster tempo. 120. One, two, one, two, ready, play. And again, making a conscious effort to make sure that you are counting the rests, just like you're counting the notes, they are important. I know that this rest is at the very end of the song, so it's easy to maybe overlook it. It's just getting in that mental habit of every time you see a rest, you're gonna count that time. Let's go ahead and try quarter notes. Starting again at 72. And as a reminder, these tempos that I use in these videos are kind of good starting points if you feel like you need to start slower or even work your way faster than the examples I give you, please feel free to do so. It's always a good idea to start slow and work your way up. Here is 72 quarter notes, bottom of page 14. Here. One, two, ready and play. So another thing that we're focusing on is making sure those notes are smooth and connected, that we're not making unwanted gaps or spaces between the notes. We're focusing on making sure that we have a good sound, making sure that we're picking in the proper place with the right hand to create the tone that we want. That we're placing our fingers in the correct place with our left hand, making sure that we have a good tone, that we're not getting buzzing sounds or dead sounds with our notes. Let's go ahead and try this exercise at a faster tempo. Here is 120. At this point, we're using all down strokes, continuing to pick downwards. Here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, play. So that's all there is to it for today's lesson. Focus on these new notes. Take this opportunity to review what we've learned in the past. If you're continuing to struggle on any of the exercises previously, please take some time to review those before you move on to our next lesson. Thank you for tuning in today. As always, please subscribe. If you're enjoying today's content, please check out my Patreon page, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.